Well, as I'm the final speaker on the final day of this event, I think it might be time for a story. I'd like to share something from my personal journey, and I'm going to be talking about integrity. So living with integrity for lasting change. I'm Catherine Sheridan. I'm based in Belgium, and uh, this is our topic today. And I need to change my slides. Yep, yeah, here we go. So sometimes when I talk to friends about things like integrity or credibility, they say, this is very vague. Uh, what do you really mean by this? It's all a bit airy-fairy. Uh, and while for me, integrity is something that I sense or I feel, um, I wanted to just go a little bit into what it is before we start talking uh, more about it. But you could break down the subject of my talk into really why integrity and honesty matter. Equally, why showing up matters. So as I said, I feel integrity. I feel when it's there. I feel when I'm out of it. And I think I have a pretty good sense about other people as well. But I wanted to get some, uh, some wording around it for you just to make sure that we, we all on the same page. And uh, to me, there's a big piece of keeping it real that's needed if we want to show up authentically and with integrity in the world. And so that means not only having the glossy, glamorous photo shoot photos, but having some real things in life as well. So, of course, I went to the Internet. So I read it on the Internet. Therefore, it must be true. Right. Apparently, a person with integrity demonstrates sound moral and ethical principles and does the right thing no matter who's watching. Does anyone have uh, an issue with this statement or does anyone see any potential challenges with this statement? Um, you feel free to drop anything into the chat. For me, it feels very subjective. It feels very personal. You know, my idea of a sound moral code or ethical principles or even doing the right thing are, are personal to me and someone else's could be very different. And while we have a sort of a universal moral code, um, not everybody's take on it is the same. And we're seeing so much division. Uh, I think the division has always been there, but this year especially, the divisions have been really amplified in society. And so just thinking that, that everyone is, everybody is uh, following the same moral code uh, and everyone is in integrity, I think is a bit of a challenge. As we see from politics at the moment, regardless of which side you're on, uh, regardless of which issues you're involved with, to me, politics is a real example of people having their very own personal and subjective uh, moral and ethical principles. So I looked to the spiritual teachers, and this quote comes from a former monk in the Plum Village tradition, Michael Wen. And he talked about when people are not in integrity. And I think, especially with uh, politicians, that's something that we, we can get a sense of when someone is out of integrity. And he said, I encounter too often an absence of integrity. A lot of people don't stand behind their words or don't follow through. And I would invite you to take a screenshot of this if you want to, or to take a note of the questions. If we were workshopping this, these would be the questions that I would invite you to reflect on. So what does it feel like to live with integrity? When I think of someone with integrity, what qualities do they embody? And for myself, do I recognize when I'm not coming from a place of integrity? You know that feeling that something is just off and we're not quite doing what we should be doing, or something doesn't feel right, very often that is that lack of integrity. And, and the last question is a tricky one. Do I feel able to call somebody out with kindness when I feel that they're not coming from a place of integrity? Now I can drop those questions into the chat at the end. For me, a big turning point was discovering the teachings of the Zen teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, he's from Plum Village. Yeah, he's actually a Vietnamese uh, Zen Buddhist teacher. I started my career as a journalist. 
And so I have been taught to question. And throughout my career as a sustainability communications consultant, the work was all about credibility. So I have been questioning things my whole life and certainly my whole career. But that's a very external focus of questioning and knowing when things are credible or not credible. And by discovering these teachings from Thich Nhat Hanh, which are basically Buddhist teachings made uh, relevant for our time today, uh, without any need to you know, declare yourself or declare your allegiance to a particular faith or school, um, it, it taught me to look inward and not only to look outward when I was questioning things. I built my business based on instinct. So I think that my instincts were always really strong. I always had that good gut feeling of when we were on the right track, when things were going in the right direction. And uh, I was working to try to make a difference in the world. But this question, are you sure? This is a really big one. And I have found this question really helpful to me in my life. There are so many times when I'm upset about something or worried or triggered about something and it's based on an assumption. And just taking the time to sit with this question, are you sure, has been a really powerful uh, tool for me. So a little bit about me, because I launched straight into the integrity story. I've always worked around credibility and thought leadership. I started out as an environment journalist here in Brussels, uh, following European and global policy. And then I built a sustainability communications consultancy, uh, which I launched in 2008. And I'm now in the process of launching a coaching practice. So I'm the founder of Sustainability Consult. I'm an ambassador for 1% for the planet. And I'm a trauma-informed, nature-connected coach and mentor. I was voted as a conscious business leader in 2018. And as my stepkid says, you took a year off work and you got a prize for it. Because basically I stepped out of my own business. I took a sabbatical for a year and uh, was recognized for my personal journey for being a conscious leader and having taken that step back to be able to assess what I needed in my life and what my next steps were. But I love the idea that I got a prize for taking time off. <laughs> so I've mentioned credibility it's something that I've worked on my whole career. And I feel that credibility is about reputation. It's about trust and whether you are trustworthy. So if integrity is something internal, it's my internal code, credibility is, can I be trusted in what I say? Am I believable? And credibility very much builds trust. So I wanted to offer something around what builds credibility. And of course, you won't be surprised to see that the first one is integrity, but also just authenticity and being real. You know, the more we can lose those extra layers of what we think we should be and how we should appear and how we should look and what we should wear on the stage and all of this nonsense, the more we can lose those layers and it's this infinite onion um, the, the more real we can be and the more authentically we can show up. The fact of showing up builds our credibility. And this year I've really embraced a, an anti-racist commitment. Um, like uh, so many you know, middle-class white liberals, uh, I really thought that I was not a racist and I couldn't possibly be a racist. And so much of the learning this year around racism has really blown, blown my brain open, frankly. And there have been times when it's been really hard. It's been really hard to just keep showing up. And I've been shamed on social media and I've been called out on social media. And, and it's just, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes we need to feel the discomfort. Sometimes we do need to step aside and just let that sit and process it. But then the challenge is to keep coming back and keep showing up. And I think everyone in the room here today is here because they're a change maker, because they want to make difference. They want to see difference in the world. And I think that consistently showing up in our integrity and being authentic are really key to making change in the world. But then it's not always easy. We want to have comp compassion for others. But most of all, and I think hardest of all, is having self-compassion. And for me, this is still a journey. I'm certainly not here saying I have all the answers. I think this will be a lifelong journey of really learning to take care of ourselves. 
And then presence, you know, I've worked as a consultant, I've done a lot of speaking, and I'm now trained as a coach. And I know that presence is really important when you are in the room with someone or when you are on Zoom with someone, that they feel that you are there with them. You're not lecturing to them, you're there in the room with them, even if it's on Zoom. So well, this sounds great. What's the problem? What's going on? Well, I spent 20 years nearly working in sustainability. 20 years from an environment journalist to a sustainability consultant. And I was doing my best to make a difference. But during those 20 years, you just have to look around. It's getting worse. You know, it's, it, I felt like I wasn't making a difference. I reached that point where I felt like I wasn't making a difference anymore. Like what I did didn't matter. And what I see a lot, in, especially in the world of sustainability, but also to some extent around consciousness and all of these fields, there's a lack of alignment. So I see companies, you know, that declare a beautiful sustainability policy and they have beautiful, shiny reports. Uh, they go to sustainability conferences and they present their beautiful programs and their beautiful reports and they win awards. And frankly, it's a circus. Because the people that work in those companies know that on the every day, companies have to make decisions and not everything in the company is going to be in alignment with the values that the company says it has. So there's that lack of alignment with the company and the company values, but then also nobody wants to go to work and check their values at the door. And that's probably why so many of us have gone in to make our own businesses and be freelancers and entrepreneurs, because the idea of going to work in a big company and having to leave your values at the door just does not appeal. And when those personal values are out of alignment, it makes it extremely difficult to make any kind of lasting change. And so the thing I talked about where I spent 20 years working on something and then just reaching a point where I felt that I wasn't making a difference, that's basically compassion fatigue. It's also called empathic burnout. It's a point that you reach where you just think, I don't care anymore. And, and I'm sad to say I reached that point a few years ago where I just thought what I'm doing is not making a difference. I don't care anymore. I can't care anymore. I have to save myself. And that leads to a kind of existential crisis and it feeds the grief and it feeds the anxiety. And for those of us working in the environmental sector, there is already a huge amount of eco grief and eco anxiety. And so when activists can't sustain themselves, and I was a consultant, but I'm very active in the community and I consider myself to be an environmental activist as a consultant. It's very hard for, for, for activists to stay sustainable over the long haul and not to burn out. And compassion fatigue and, and this lack of alignment with values is a big part of that. And it leads to a loss of agency and just feeling that I can't make a difference. It doesn't matter whatever I do because it's all going to hell anyway. I'm happy to say that I got to a point, I got past it. I got past the feeling of compassion fatigue and I'm, I'm able to you know, be here with you today. And I'm pretty active uh, and I'm trying to make a difference and I'm back in a place of hope, which actually considering everything that's going on in the world, I think is quite a brave position. <laughs> I'm back in a place of hope and I'm back believing that what we do as individuals matters. And if anything, what we do as individuals matters more. Of course, you want to vote and, and write to companies and write to your politicians. I mean, there are things that we need to do on the global stage as well. But the individual action really matters because it has a ripple effect on our community. So if we can show up in our community, in our neighborhood um, and lead from a place of integrity and by lead, I mean, I apply lead to everyone. Everyone can lead. Everyone is a leader in their own lives. It's not about being a manager, being a boss, being a C-suite executive. If we lead from a place of integrity, we can make change and that ripple effect will impact everyone. But we can't, I don't think, be effective on all issues. So it's really um, an, a piece of advice I would like to share is just to find your area, find your field of action. You can't change, we can't change everything single-handedly. I've accepted already that I can't change the world single-handedly. If Greta Thunberg can't do it single-handedly, I definitely can't. So we have to find our area of action where we're going to try to make change. 
and we can keep showing up in an authentic, honest and real way. We can keep showing up from integrity. And when we find ourselves out of integrity, we can catch ourselves and we can do the work that we need to do to get back in. It's a radar, it's a signal, a, a, an alarm that says, oh, something is off. And so that personal work of, of understanding ourselves and letting go, I talk about the, the infinite onion, you know, it's constantly shedding all these layers of this onion that goes on forever, but just keeping letting go of things that no longer serve us. So I approach my work um, from mindfulness, nature connection and ecotherapy, and also everything that I've learned from my own journey about resilience and dealing with eco anxiety and grief, compassion fatigue and burnout. And a final quote, by choosing integrity, I become more whole, but wholeness does not mean perfection. It means becoming more real by acknowledging the whole of who I am. And I mean, we need to drop perfection. If anyone's still hanging on to perfection, that's, that's really not serving us. So I, I love this, that the more authentically and the more real we can show up, it doesn't mean that we've got everything worked out. It doesn't mean that I have all of the answers to all of your questions. We just keep doing the work. And if you'd like to connect with me, I'm on Instagram, katie.76. I'm on LinkedIn. And those are the two websites. The coaching practice is coming. Uh, so if you're following me, you'll see more about that uh, in the coming months. Thank you.